Hi, thanks for the introduction. Hi, uh, my name's Tom. I'm in the product team at Foronex, and I've got my colleagues, as many Calpis, with me today. Um, so Calpis is the account manager who takes care of the commercial side of things. Um, I'm just going to spend about five or ten minutes introducing who we are at Foronix before handing over to Usman for a technical demo. Um, and if you have any questions today, please just pop them in the chat, as Finn said. We're very happy to um, take as many questions as you like uh, at the end of the session. So we were founded in 1996 in Vancouver in Canada. And since our founding, we have deployed more than 10 million licenses all around the world in more than 150 countries. And we now have more than 30,000 unique customers. So this is where our offices are. So as I said, we're headquartered in Vancouver in Canada. We are based in Bracknell in England, but we have support coverage in Europe throughout business hours. So we work with some of the biggest corporations on the planet, and some of the biggest universities and public sector organizations, but also all kinds of small businesses. So we provide really excellent customer services for everyone, um, small, medium or large. And however complicated your IT estate is, we're trusted to look after it. So just to introduce a couple of the products we're going to be demoing today. So Foronix Cloud Deep Freeze and Foronix Cloud Deploy are both endpoint management solutions. So that's, that's what we're going to be demoing. If you're an IT manager in charge of a lot of workstations, there's going to be something in these products to make your life easier. The key differentiator between Deep freeze and deploy is the reboot to restore solution in deep freeze, which is typically useful in multi user environments. Um, so, deploy doesn't contain the reboot to restore functionality. So, it's typically used in environments, more corporate environments, where it's one user per machine. And Phronics Insight is a powerful tool for teachers to manage their classes. But as I understand it, um, we don't have teachers on the call today. Um, so we won't be demoing Insight, but if that's something you're interested in, uh, please let us know and we can uh, schedule a later demo. Yeah, so just to explain um, a bit more clearly the difference between Deep Freeze and Deploy, so they, they both are cloud-based solutions to manage your endpoints centrally from one URL, but Deep Freeze is typically for multi-user machines. So for example, um, schools, universities, or libraries, where it's important to eliminate the previous user's data um, before the next user sits down and starts their session. So um, there are lots of um, really great benefits to Deep Freeze as a reboot to restore solution from a security point of view. Uh, but also from a privacy point of view and an efficiency point of view, because most help desk tickets will disappear upon a restart. So just looking at some of the features contained within Foronix Cloud, um, there's lots of ways in which we can save you money, save you time. <clears throat> uh, just to pick out a couple there, software deployment, um, if you're spending a lot of time packaging up software updates and you find it hard to keep on top of which versions of which software you're running and where, then that will become straightforward with Foronix Cloud. You can automate it to happen out of production hours. The same with Windows updates. You can deliver all your Windows updates automatically or you can approve centrally. Um, you're going to have total control of your Windows updates. You shouldn't be wondering about um, what Windows updates are getting pushed out and where. And that's obviously especially important since the pandemic. There's a lot more home working, there's a lot more devices, and it's become harder to keep on top of um, where all your devices are and what versions of everything you're running. Imaging is another big time saver. 
Um, it's really easy to image your workstations from the cloud. Uh, and Remote Connect um, included in Ultimate licenses, so you can just remote into any of your machines when you need to. But lots more to come in the demo that's about to start. Um, and just to explain, we offer a free trial, 30-day free trial, no obligation. We'll help you through the trial, any, any questions you, you have as you test. So just to um, give a couple of examples of happy customers, we have thousands of happy customers, but just a couple of examples. Um, LAPD use our anti-executable product to um, reduce their downtime and to improve their security and making their IT management easy. So that they've cut their costs um, with Chronix Cloud. And just a couple more testimonials from Europe. Um, yeah, and really the key thing uh, from those quotes there is the amount of time that we're saving and that security uh, shouldn't be a headache anymore. Okay, I'm now going to hand over to my colleague Usman, who will demo Chronic Cloud D3 and Chronic Cloud Deploy. Right. Thank you, Tom. Good morning, everyone. So what I'm going to do is switch from the presentation to the web browser, and then we talk about the products. Okay, so let me start from the scratch. All right, so talking about DFreeze, it's a reboot to restore product. As, as Tom mentioned, we've been selling DFreeze for the past 25 years. And what DFreeze does, it's a very simple concept. It's reboot to restore. Now let's take an example of a school environment, IT environment, or a computer lab where you've got 25 computers sitting across, you know, in a room, and there are different batches of students coming in. So student one comes in, and 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 you know, with the batch one, and the 25 students that using those computers, they're running their project. Now, as a user, I could do anything. I could just log into the machine. I can, you know, uh, change the wallpaper. I can change the settings. I can download something on the machine. Anything that I do after I've completed my session, as an administrator, it's quite difficult to understand what changes have been made. Some might just be hidden changes. Some might be a virus, something like, you know, that's not really visible in the UI, or it could be browsing history. So as an administrator, it's quite difficult to identify all those changes. So what DeepFreeze does here is all you have to do is restart the computer. And when the computers are restarted, it will wipe out all the changes that the users have done. So let's say you know the computer was affected by a virus, or someone changed the wallpaper, or someone deleted a system file. All those changes will go away, and the computers will be back into its original state. And when the next patch comes in, the computers will be fully ready in production without any downtime. So that's the core functionality of DeepFreeze. And as I said, you know, we've been selling this for 25 years. It's quite a successful product. We've got a lot of schools and colleges and environmental, uh, like, you know, public environments using the product. So DeepFreeze uh, helps you to keep your IT environment protected. Uh, it helps you to reduce your IT tickets. So based on the you know, the math that we've done over these years, we've identified that it would help you to reduce up to 63% of your IT tickets. So your IT team can actually focus on something more productive rather than just fixing basic issues and re-imaging computers. So with that being said, I'd like to focus on the management side of the product, which has a lot of additional features. Uh, at any time, if anyone has a question, please post it into the Q&A uh, section of uh, the meeting. And then at the end of the webinar, we will answer each of those questions for you. So in order to get started, uh, it's a web-based console. So you have to go to the URL dfreeze.com. And then if you have an account with us, you can simply sign in. Or if you're a first-time customer, you can click on start your free trial. When you click on start your free trial, it will ask you, are you new to dfreeze or if you're an existing customer? Depending on that, it will let you either fill a form and create an account or just reset your account and then get started. Now, once you have the username and password, you can put in here and then click on sign in. 
Once you sign in, the dashboard will give you a clear summary of how your environment is functioning. So it will, as you scroll, it will tell you which users have been logging in, how many computers have deep freeze enabled, what's the configuration of your operating systems, how many Windows 10 machines or Windows 11 machines you've got, if you're using our antivirus module, what's the status of it, and so on. So all the information that you need as an administrator will be available to you upfront. The product is fully localized. So if you'd like to use it in a different language, apart from English, uh, we support six other languages. So you can use it in Chinese, Japanese, German, Portuguese, French, or Spanish. So it's fully localized and instantly you can change the language. You don't have to reinstall anything. It will just automatically just update the language. for you. Once you have the console signed in, uh, the getting started with the product is quite easy. It's a three-step process. So you have to configure a policy, create a group, and then deploy the agent. Once you perform these three steps, you will be uh, you know, your environment would be ready and you can start managing your PCs from the cloud. Now, there are several benefits of using the cloud console. Number one is as an administrator, you can manage your IT environment from anywhere. And just how we experienced the whole pandemic, you know, where everyone was working remotely from home, from different locations. If you go for an old school on premise solution, which requires network connectivity, you know, you're stuck with. Uh, limited options, but with the cloud-based product, as an administrator, you can be at any location and your users can be at any location. There's no restriction on, uh, you know, you have to be within the network. The product is fully cloud-based and wherever you are, it will continue to work and you can continue to manage the environment. So in order to get started, as I said, there are three steps. So the number one step is to configure policy. So the policy, is the main engine of the product where we offer different features that you can take advantage of. So I'm gonna click on manage policies. I can click here or I can click on the manage policies button here. It will take me to the policies page. Now, once I'm on the policies page, it will allow me to perform different or enable different settings. So for example, if I'd like to you know, enable the defreeze module, if I'd like to enable other modules, I can do all of that from here. So as you can see, I'm on the policies page now. And on the left hand side, there are all these options. We've got defreeze, data igloo, software updater, and executable, and so on. So these are the different modules that we have packaged with the product. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now you can take this as an example, like Microsoft Office 365, for instance. You know, what it does is it's got Word, Excel, PowerPoint. All of these applications, they've packaged into a single product called Microsoft Office 365. Or if you take the Adobe Creative Cloud, it's got Illustrator, Photoshop, InDesign, XD, all of these different apps packaged into a single solution called the Creative Cloud. We've done something similar. Under the Ferronix Cloud product, we have our deep freeze module, which we've been selling over these years. But at the same time, you know, while we've been selling deep freeze, Ferronix as a company, we built different solutions to cater different use cases, different requirements for different customers, along with deep freeze. And with the cloud product, we've combined all of that under different packages. So as you can see, we've got a basic package here, a premium and an ultimate package. So if you go for the basic package, you would just get deep freeze. If you go for premium, you would get until half of user stats. If you go for ultimate, you get almost everything that we offer, and the antivirus module can be added on to any of the uh, packages here. Now, with that being said, uh, I'll give you a quick overview of the different options available here. So, the number one is deep freeze. If I want to enable deep freeze, all I have to do is enable it in the policy, configure the settings for deep freeze, and then save the policy and install the agents using this policy. As soon as I do that, defreeze will be installed on the computers where I install the agent. Now, keep it, just just a few things to keep in mind. Like what the way defreeze works is, you might have some questions. Like you know, it's going to restart every time. It's going to wipe out everything that I do. So how do I keep the computers up to date? How do I keep Windows updates 
install? How do I keep Chrome updates, Edge updates intact? So in order to handle all of that, we have options within the product. We've made the product quite seamless and easy to use. Now, for example, we've got this Windows Update tab here. Now, here, if you see, if you let Defense allow the management of Windows updates, you can then schedule a task where Defreeze will install the updates for you. So we've added a smart functionality called maintenance mode. A maintenance mode is basically a task that you add into your Defreeze configuration and you tell Defreeze that, okay, I want to perform maintenance every day from, let's say, 11 p.m. at night uh, or 8, 8 p.m. Uh, at night until maybe, uh, you know, 3 a.m. in the morning or until the Windows update is complete. Now, when I do this, when I set up this task, DFreeze will automatically reset my computer from a frozen state. So we use the term frozen and thawed to uh, clarify, like, you know, to, to display that if DFreeze is enabled or disabled. So DFreeze will restart the computer from a frozen state. It would go into a maintenance mode where you can also keep the keyboard and mouse locked so that no one can make any permanent changes. And then, depending on your Windows update settings here, if you've uh, configured DFreeze to get the Windows updates from the Microsoft website and just install the security and critical updates, DFreeze would then do that, install the security and critical updates for you, and at the end time of the maintenance, it will come back into a frozen state. All of that will happen automatically you don't have to do anything. We also support Wake on Land. So your machines will automatically start up. They will do the maintenance mode. They will run the updates. They will get the updates, install them, and come back frozen. So when the users come in the next day, your computers will be protected. Now, deep things can be used in several environments. It's not just for school labs. I mean, if, you, if you've got a, you know, a, a public environment like a library, where users come in and that you'd like to freeze those computers, deep freeze can be used. If you've got a corporate environment where users are just, you know, they're coming in and updating user records on a web-based browser and they don't really need to install or save anything, they just have a very specific use case, you can use deep freeze over there. If you've got manufacturing devices or, or point of sale devices where they're supposed to just update the database again, DFreeze can be used there. So just like this, DFreeze can be used on a lot of computers. And when you have deep freeze, your IT tickets, your IT workload will drastically go down and you will always be able to keep them up to date. So that's the, again, you know, the big use case around deep freeze. There's several other things that you can do along in the product, uh, but in our webinar today, we'll keep it quite high level. But again, as I said, if you have questions, just let us know and then we can answer them at the end of the session. Moving forward, we have Data Igloo. The concept is the same. You have to go to the policy option here in Data Igloo and then enable the product. Now, when you enable Data Igloo or any other product in the, in the policy, it will then make sure that gets installed on the machine. So for example, You've got Data Igloo here. If you've enabled it, what it will do is it will allow you to exclude stuff from Deep Freeze. So if you've got some important files or folders that you want to retain across restarts, Data Igloo will let you do that. So that's the functionality of Data Igloo. Then we have Software Updater. This is quite interesting module. Now, <clears throat> so I talked about Windows updates, how you can program specific Windows updates to be installed either from the Microsoft website or from your WSS server. Similarly, we've got software updates. Now, if you've got Chrome, Edge, uh, Firefox, or VLC Player, or 7-Zip, all these applications, they keep getting updates on, you know, monthly basis, most likely, like, or, or at least like every couple of months they get an update. And now, if you've got hundreds of computers, and if you've got deep freeze, you want to make sure, you know, they're protected with deep freeze, they're frozen. But at the same time, if you want to keep everything up to date, it becomes difficult to do it one by one. 
So in order to simplify that, we have the software updater module here. With software updater, what we've done is we've prepackaged around 105 applications for you. So let's say I select Chrome, I select Edge, and then I go down, I select VLC player, and then Airfarm view maybe, Reader DC, and uh, Team Viewer. Now, when I select all these apps here, again, I have to just do a maintenance period. I have to define a start time and an end time when I want the software of data maintenance to work. And automatically, the same concept of maintenance will apply here. Your computers will restart from a frozen state, do the updates for Chrome, do the updates for Firefox, and then enable deep freeze again. So that way, along with your Windows updates, your software updates can take place and your computers will always have the latest and the greatest version of every product that you're running. Uh, with that being said, we've got around 105 applications that we constantly update in the repository. So whenever you install anything from the software updater module or update anything, you will always get the latest version. And as you can see, the list is extensive. We've got almost every common application there, which is used across different environments. But if you think that there are some special applications that should have been part of the list, but they're not part of it, and you're using them in your environment, we have an option to add those as well. So we, we support the ability to add a custom package also. So uh, under our software deployment module, you can add a package by linking an MSI file or an EXE file, and then that would get installed or deployed during the maintenance period as well. So you're not just limited to the 105 apps which we've designed, but you have the flexibility to add more applications. As long as those applications support silent installation, you can then install those apps as well during the maintenance period. All right, so that's software updater. Uh, again, if any questions, put them into the chat. <clears throat> Moving forward, the next one we have is the anti-executable module. Now, anti-executable is a part of our security offering. So what we do is we, we believe in the concept of layered security, and we offer different modules with different layers of security, and anti-executable is one of them. So what it does is basically, it's a very straightforward app and it lets you build your trusted application list. So you can either do a whitelist or a blacklist. So if you do a whitelist, then every app that you've allowed, only those apps will run, everything else will be blocked. If you've done a blacklist, then only the apps that you've blocked will be blocked, everything else will run. So this application lets you configure different settings so you can define which are your trusted apps, which are the apps not trusted, anything that's not defined can automatically get blocked. There's several configuration options here which you can implement and have complete protection. So it's a complete application whitelisting module that would give you an additional layer of protection. At the same time, it also has a dedicated ransomware prevention features so when you enable that, you will have additional protection from ransomware. So we will enable some best practices there that will keep your environment further protected. Okay, so that's the anti-executable module. Again, I'm trying to keep it as high level as possible. Uh, there's so many micro features in the product that we can go over. Uh, if, you, if you're interested in one of the modules and if you'd like to try it out or if you need more information on any one of them, just keep that in mind. Uh, at the end of the session, you know, you can either uh, ask us questions or uh, you can try it out by yourself or get in touch with us uh, through our partner's app store. Uh, and we can, uh, you know, uh, have an online webinar specific on that module for you. All right, the next one is WinSelect. So WinSelect is again the additional security module. What WinSelect does is it allows you to basically uh, install or enable a kiosk mode. So if you're looking to just customize the user experience of the, all your users, and if you want to give them a limited look and feel kind of uh, desktop, you can then uh, enable the kiosk mode. Alternatively, if you don't want to put the kiosk mode, 
what you can do is you can apply individual restrictions. So if you want users not to have the functionality of opening the task manager, you can disable that. If you don't want them to, to drag and drop, you can disable that. If you want to hide everything under the control panel, you can hide all of those options or specific options. So with select is like desktop lockdown or group policies where you can <clears throat> where you can enable different restrictions and uh, you know customize the user experience on top of D phrase. So this will give you further control of your devices. You can apply application level restrictions. You can do printer level restrictions. You can also have an acceptable use policy so that when the users start to use the computer, uh, they can accept the environment policy and then use it. And then we also have user sessions where you can generate a code, give it to the user, the user can log in with the code and the computer will just run for that time. Right, so that's been select. <coughs> We've got a few more features here uh, in the policy. Uh, as you can see, the policy is completely modular, which means I can keep win select disabled and I can use other features as well. So you don't have to use everything. You can kind of customize the policy based on your requirements. So moving to Cloud Sync, when you enable Cloud Sync, it will allow your defreeze users to save their data onto their cloud drive. So Let's say if you're using Office 365, you can limit it just to Microsoft OneDrive. And when you have OneDrive enabled, when the computers boot up, the users sign in with their OneDrive account, and you can limit them to a domain. And then automatically, any data that they save under these folders will get saved back to their cloud drive, and their computers will always be protected and clean. So that with defreeze, the machines will come back to its original state. At the same time, Cloud Drive will make sure uh, their data is with them wherever they go. Okay, moving forward, we put use it stats. So there's not much to configure in the policy here, but you just have to enable it. Once you do that, you get some really, really interesting reports about your environment. It starts with the inventory module. So when I click on inventory on top, it will take me to the software and hardware inventory. So initially it starts with the hardware side. It will tell you the details of your computer, which computers are connected, what's the policy applied on it, what group they belong to. And then as you scroll on the right side, you can see it's got everything that you need as an IT admin. If they're part of a domain or a work group, what's the OU, uh, OU membership for the user or the computer, what's the current user, who's the current user that's logged in, when this information was updated for the manufacturer of the computer. And if I scroll, you can see it's got a lot of information, like the RAM information, operating system details, computer model, BIOS details, the IP address, internal IP, public IP, location of the device, uh, the network adapter details, the health of the device as well. So if it's got one update pending or multiple updates pending, same with application and uh, Windows update. So as an administrator, you have all the information that you need uh, to, you know, about your environment. And at any time, if you need to further customize it, you can either get a CSV out of it, or you can click on a computer and view uh, additional details in the big of So that's the hardware side of inventory. Uh, when you hover on the inventory option and click on the install application inventory, so this will give you the software side of inventory. So here you can see all the different apps installed on all computers across your environment. Now, if you'd like to filter down to a particular app, you can do that. So if you want to filter down and see 7-zip is installed on which computers, you will filter down to 7-zip, and then it will give you the list of computers that 7-zip is on. If you want to look it into a different way, if you want to just look it by computer by computer, if you want to see what's there on the Microsoft Surface tablet, you filter down to that, and then all the apps that are there on the Microsoft Surface tablet will be visible to you. You can also uninstall apps from here. So if you go to the applications page, you will be able to create a custom package or uh, anything that's pre-packaged, you can just click on it and then uninstall or update as well. So, so the whole idea of the product is to give you one console. So you may have uh, different products being used in your environment. Maybe some might have SCCM, some might have 
uh, you know, Snow for inventories, I might have uh, another product for uh, maybe remote control or, or uh, imaging, which we'll cover in a future, uh, in, in a few minutes. So you can then see that with the cloud product, you can basically use R1 DeFoist cloud solution and manage and your, your entire environment. And you don't need to use 10 different products. With one single product, you'll have access to all those tools and, uh, from anywhere over the internet. So it's quite an interesting uh, you know, approach towards endpoint management. So going back to the policy, we've covered until use it stats. Uh, inventory use it stats also has some reports. So you can do application reports where it, can, it will show you how much time a particular app is being used by which user on which computer. Then it will also show you computer usage or login summary if you want to track a particular user, what time they're logging in, what time they're logging out, all that information. And why we do that, uh, our products are fully GDPR compliant as well. So we don't capture any personal information, but at the same time, uh, only the uh, you know the core information about the you know, uh, like the PC information that's outside of the personal information uh, will be captured. Okay, so that's using stats. Then we have incident reporting and ticketing. They both are quite similar in nature. So basically, it's a helpless tool where when you enable ticketing or incident reporting, your users will have an option to either submit a ticket from here and then uh, you as an administrator, you will have the dashboard access of the tickets. So you can then see who has created the ticket, uh, what's the ticket ID, you can click on the ticket, you can view the history, you can reply back to the user. So this again, you know, adds back to the uh, one console approach. Uh, if you've got a third party tool for help desk management, you can give up on that and continue using our product for doing your PC or, or ticket management on a daily basis. Okay, so going back to policies, I'm gonna add another one real quick. Okay, and just to repeat, uh, you know, if you have questions, do, do keep them uh, in the Q&A and very soon, like maybe in five minutes, we will start addressing the questions there. Okay, then the next one is power scale. This tool, has a lot of benefits, especially with the energy crisis going across Europe, this adds a lot of value. So PowerSave has been built on a very simple concept to save energy, to save power, and make sure your computers are not running unnecessarily. So what it does is it lets you create your power plan. It lets you define what time your environment opens up, what time the computers start, if they are inactive, what action should be taken, if you want to put them into a standby state, shutdown state, all of that can be configured. And it you can really configure at a very micro level. You can define you know, specific things like only this activity is below 20%, then do power saving and so on. So you know, all that information can be configured. Or you can just leave it to, uh, on, on dynamic configuration as well, where you don't have to worry about specifics and then just go with the flow of like a 10 minute sleep or a 20 minute sleep. Now, once you do that, once you configure your power plan, PowerSafe will make sure your computer, if they are running and no one is really using them, and uh, if it's just sitting there for 10 minutes or 20 minutes based on your power plan, it will then automatically put it into a standby state or a sleep state, and then make sure you're, you're saving power and the computers are not running unnecessarily. And one of the nicest feature of the product is the energy cost where you can define how much you actually pay for your power bills. So let's say you pay nine cents or, or uh, you know, like depending on the euro or, or dollar value, how, how much ever you're paying uh, based on your region, you can then um, get accurate information of how much power you're actually saving. So as an administrator or as a person in charge for the IT management, you can then go into the reports and then go into power save reports and you can actually see how much money you're actually saving with the product. And we have some proven use cases. We've got some large universities which have actually been able to save thousands of dollars or pounds, uh, you know, uh, through power saving just by having that one module enabled. Even if you look at saving it one pound or one euro, 
per month per computer and if you've got 100 computers you know you're still saving substantial amount of money uh, and and you're contributing to with the plan you're making sure your environment's clean and green and and there's so many ways you can recover the investment that you make into the product there could be some grants that you can apply for where you can recover the uh, you know uh, the cost that you invest into the product also uh, by saving money you can recover partial license cost as well so power save again it's like a no brainer uh, it just adds extreme value into the product okay so that's power save ticketing we've covered along with incident reporting we've got imaging and remote connect to power and then we do a high level overview of a deploy product so imaging would allow you to deploy a full windows image so if you're using ghost or uh, acronis and if you are constantly re-imaging computers with our solution you can make sure uh, you know you can push an image seamlessly over the network or over the cloud we support both options uh, and uh, it's again quite seamless easy to use for you then we have remote connect Remote Connect allows you to RDP or VNC into any of your computers from anywhere. So again, going back to the use case of working from home and if your coworkers or your staff members are working from home as well, and if they have a technical problem, you can directly connect to their computer and help them resolve the problem. So you can either take over the session or shadow the session, and then it will allow you to remote connect and control the PC. So that's the remote connect functionality. Again, this will help you to cut down cost if you're using a third party product. You can give up on the licenses and use our product to perform the same actions. And lastly, we put our antivirus module. So the reason we have packaged an antivirus is for full compatibility with DeFreeze. If you're using a third party AV, uh, what would happen is the AV definition will get wiped out upon restart but if you're using our antivirus the definitions would stay on the machine and we've partnered with bit defender to provide the functionality again this is part of a layered security approach uh, you know defreeze would clear up the viruses upon restart as i mentioned but at the same time if you want full protection at across you know different stages you will have uh, with the antivirus module complete protection so when you combine all these modules configure the policy you will be able to achieve a lot more than the different apps that you're using in your environment. And we also provide consistency and professional services. So if you need our help in you know, configuring these products and deploying the products into your environment according to your needs, we can do that as well. We provide remote and on-site services to uh, help you with the deployment. All right, so that's the policy. Once you configure it uh, under the home button, there are five different ways you can push the product. And once you push the product on the machine, they start to show up under the computer's page. And then from here, you can do the day to day management. So that's overall what the cloud product has to offer. Uh, you know, you've got, we've got user management, you've got site based management. If you've got multiple locations, you can manage multiple locations from a single console. We've got mobile device management. So if you have iPads, Androids, or Chromebooks, you can manage those devices from here as well. And one more thing that I'd like to add is the Ferronix deploy product. So, so what we did was, uh, you know, as you can see, we've got DeFreeze product, which has a very use, specific use case of freezing the machines. But there's so many other things along with DeFreeze that that's available in the product, like, you know, uh, the ability to do Windows updates, to do software updates, to do imaging, and so on. So if you're looking for, uh, you know, to manage an environment without actually freezing, our deploy product will let you do that. As you can see, it's got the same set of features like Windows update, application, inventory, all of that is similar. Uh, deploy will let you do all of that without the deep freeze module. So depending on your use case, if you want to freeze the machine and manage them, uh, then we have the defreeze cloud module. If you want to freeze, uh, if you don't want to freeze, but just manage them, we have the deploy product. All the features across both the products are quite similar, except defreeze. So defreeze is a differentiator between the defreeze cloud product and deploy. All right. So that's all from my side. I hope the presentation has been quite useful uh, for you. 
uh, we will now go into the Q and A and answer some questions. Uh, so, yeah, Finn, back to you. Uh, if you'd like to take over and see if you've got questions there. Hi, this is actually David. Thank you both Us Usman and Tom for a great and very interesting presentation. As Usman said, we're going to finalize this session with a Q&A um, and we have actually received quite a few questions I can see in the chat window. So I guess we'll start right away. The first question is following. Does the imaging module support PXE booting? All right, that's an interesting question. So the answer is yes, we are imaging module supports Pixie Boot. So if you've got a network full of computers, you can set up an imaging server that can act as a Pixie server as well. And then you can boot your, or push your image over the network. So uh, you can automate the whole process. Uh, we have Pixie support in the product. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah, it does. Very, very good, thank you. Uh, second question, why should we buy your endpoint management solution as opposed to any other? All right, so that's again quite an interesting one. What I'd like to do is highlight on the fact that we are market leaders with the DFreeze product. So DFreeze functionality, as you can see, let's say you, you buy SCCM or you buy Manage Engine or any other management product, you won't really get the freezing functionality. We have patented, uh, you know, three patents around deep freeze functionality, the reboot to restore concept. So that's only available in our product along with all the management solutions. So if you're looking to manage your environment along with deep freeze or freezing them and uh, ensuring 100% protection and uptime of your environment, then that's the main reason why you should buy a product. Okay. Okay. Yeah, it does. Here is an interesting uh, question about the PowerSave console. Uh, how much money might the PowerSave module save me on energy? Okay. It's a tricky to answer, right. maybe. <laughs> so, here yeah, with PowerSave, you can actually get accurate reports. So, if I go back to the policy and if I go into the PowerSave module, you can see. Uh, I, it's just from that where you can specify how much you actually pay for your power bill. So without any confusion or ambiguity there, you can actually get accurate reports. So let's say you're paying certain amount for a computer, you know, kilowatt per hour, you define that. And then when you go into the reports, you can actually see how much money you're saving. Now, few use cases which I highlighted during the presentation, one was, you know, one one dollar or one euro per month for hundred computers would get you a thousand euros or twelve hundred euros per per annum. That's a very straightforward use case, especially with the energy cost going you know extremely high across Europe and, and the rest of the world. That's one case. But to be honest, I've actually seen one of our customers' console uh, where uh, you know when we went into the power save report, so they've got a few thousand computers there. And when we went into the reports and we, we generated the power saving report, the, the savings that they had was like around 8,000 or 9,000 euros. So that again, a lot of uh, dollar value there uh, and saving just by making sure your computers are being switched off automatically. And uh, as a, the other thing I mentioned is the grants. Like, you know, if you, if you go green, there's several grants that you can apply for, and that would also help you to recover the cost of the licenses that you put in. Okay, I hope Great. that question. Thank you. Um, I think we'll have time for one more question uh, before we end this session. Uh, can I can I set Deep Freeze to work on some machines, but not others? Okay, so again, the answer is yes to that. Now, as you can see here in the policy, I've just enabled power save. I've not enabled deep freeze. If I want to do software updates, I can enable that as well. So without enabling deep freeze, I can create a policy. I can call it non deep freeze policy and, and push all the different modules that we have here without actually freezing it. That will actually become like deploy, but the only difference in using it 
in this way, as opposed to using deploy as an independent product is, uh, here you would eventually pay for deep freeze, even if you're not using it. So depending on your requirements, you can decide that, okay, if you're not going to use deep freeze at all, you can then go for deploy. Uh, but if you have, let's say just a few computers that you don't want to freeze, but use everything else, yeah, then it makes sense to have everything under a, a single console. So yeah, in, in a nutshell, the answer is yes, you can do that. So I hope that answers your question. Uh, sure, surely did. So that's actually all the questions I received. Uh, guys, I would once again like to thank you for a great presentation. Uh, Finn, over to you. Thank you. Yeah, and uh, thank you, Esmond and Kalpesh and Tom, for a great presentation. Um, let me see if I can take back the screen if you guys are done.